This video, we will be going over the graphs of exponential functions and how we can transform exponential functions. So this list is a summary of the characteristics of our most basic exponential function, f of x is equal to b to the x. So b has to be greater than 0, and it can't equal 1. So an exponential function um, is 1 to 1. That means it passes the horizontal line test. The horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So the function could do something like this. It would be either increasing um, or the function could be decreasing like this. So the function could have growth or decay, kind of a crummy curve here, not my best exponential function that I've ever drawn, but you get the idea. Um, so in both cases, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Um, in both cases, the domain is all real numbers. Um, the range here is from 0 to infinity. Um, it has a y-intercept of 0, comma 1. So this point right here is 0, comma 1. Um, and then, again, it's increasing if b is greater than 1. So this, the blue function, the increasing one, is b greater than 1. This one is b less than 1. Now, we may have seen an exponential function a times a times b raised to the x. Well, this given exponential function just has an a value equal to 1. So if a is equal to 1, we don't need to mention necessarily um, an a value. But because a is equal to 1, that corresponds to what the y-intercept is. So if an a value is not equal to 1, um, that would change what the y-intercept is going to be. So let's graph f of x is equal to 0 0.25 raised to the x. Now, if we want to write this in a times b raised to the x form, this would be f of x is equal to 1 times 0 0.25 raised to the x. So the b value is 0 0.025 because, so b is equal to 0.25, which is less than 1. So because this is less than 1, we would say this function is decaying or decreasing. And then the 1 here is the y or the y intercept so it's going to pass through this value so the graph i mean it's hard to be 100 percent precise but the graph would look something like this so it passed through the point zero comma one and it'd be decreasing um and it would have a um a horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero here so the domain, well, the domain for an exponential function is all real numbers. The range is going to be from 0 to infinity, and it never touches 0. And the asymptote, asymptote, an exponential function has a horizontal asymptote, so this asymptote is y is equal to 0. So if we transform this function in any ways, in any way, the domain will always be all real numbers, but the range could change because if this graph is shifted up or down, the range will change, and then the asymptote could also change if the graph is shifted up, up or down. So let's first look at how we can transform a function vertically. So the initial function, we call this the parent function, f of x is equal to 2 raised to the x. So that function always passes through 0, 1 right here. Okay, so if we add 3 in the back end, that's going to raise the function 3. If we subtract 3, that's going to lower the function vertically by 3 units. Um, and what also happens over here is the horizontal, um, the horizontal asymptote also shifts. So in the parent function, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, but if we add 3, the horizontal asymptote becomes y equals 3. Conversely, y equals negative 3 if we shift down 3 units. Okay, so um, 
the range remains the same in each of these. I'm sorry, the domain remains the same for each of these. So if a, ver a vertical shift does not affect the domain, a vertical shift does affect the asymptote and the range, right? We saw the asymptote, how that is affected. Um, the range, so the range for, let's say, g of x, that's going to be from 3 to infinity. Um, the range for f of x is 0 to infinity. And the range for h of x is negative 3 to infinity. So the range is affected by a vertical shift, but not the domain. Let's look at how a horizontal shift affects things. So remember, a horizontal shift takes place to the input of the function. So um, the horizontal shift is going to occur in the exponent with the input value, which is x in this case. So if we want to shift to the right 3, we're going to subtract 3 to the input. If we want to move to the left 3, we're going to add 3 to the input. Okay, so um, in this case, the domain does not change for each of these. So the domain for all three functions um, is all real numbers. And the range and the asymptote are also always going to be the same. So the range in all these is going to be 0 to infinity. And the asymptote is going to be y is equal to 0. So there's no, no vertical changes are happening here. Um, so all of these, the domain, the range, and the asymptote are all going to be the same um, if we are to do a horizontal shift in this way. So let's graph a function that has some transformations uh, applied. So the negative 1, that's going to be a um, horizontal shift, right 1 unit. So we're going right 1 unit. And then this plus 3 is going to say we're going to move up 3 units. Okay, so first I'm going to graph the parent function here, and the parent function is f of x is equal to 2 to the x. So um, 2 is greater than 1, so we're going to be increasing. Uh, let's try that. Okay, so it looks something like that. Imagine that was a very smooth curve. Um, the y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. Um, the, the domain of this is all real numbers. The range is from 0 to infinity. The asymptote is y is equal to 0. Um, so how you want to go about transforming this graph is first by um, applying these transformations, right 1, up 3, to the one point that we know that is on the graph, which is 0, 1. So if I went right 1 unit and then up 3 units, we're going to end up right here, and the shape of this function is going to be remaining the same. We said that the horizontal asymptote was y is equal to 0, so that is going to move up 3 units to y is equal to 3. Let me write that in a different color. This graph. Look something like that. So the asymptote here is y equals 3. And it got transformed from the initial asymptote of y equal to 0. Alright, so we want to find for this new function, for the transformed function f of x is equal to 2 raised to the x minus 1 plus 3. We want to find the domain. Well, the domain of f of x. The domain for any exponential function is always all real numbers. The range for f of x is going to be from 3 to infinity. And the asymptote, horizontal asymptote, is going to be y is equal to 3. So one thing you may notice is that these um, kind of correspond um, with each other. Horizontal asymptote of 3, the smallest value on the range is also 3.
Now let's look at how we stretch and compress an exponential function. So this has to do with the a value. Okay, so if the a value is greater than 1, so in this graph on the left, a is greater than 1 in the g function, right? In the f function, a is equal to 1. And in the g function, a is equal to 3. So what we'd say, this is stretched vertically by a factor of a. Okay? And then over here, on the right side, we have a is equal to one-third in the h function. So if a is less than zero, we say it's compressed vertically by a factor of a. All right, so nothing changes as far as the domain, the range, or the asymptote, though, if we are stretching or compressing. Um, it just makes the curve steeper or more shallow. And the last transformation that we would see has to do with reflecting um, the function. So if we have, if we negate the a value like this, that is going to be a vertical reflection. If we negate the input like this, that's going to be a horizontal reflection. And let's just compare uh, the parent function to each of these reflections. Look at the domain and the range and the asymptote. So as mentioned, the domain regardless um, is always all real numbers. So the domain for, I'm sorry, not the domain, we just said the domain. The range for g of x, well, the range here, and on the initial function, we had 0 to infinity. Now we're going to say negative infinity to 0. So this is going to be negative infinity to 0. Okay, so it's all the negative numbers would make up the range. And then the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, is still just going to be y is equal to 0. Okay, so the horizontal asymptote isn't going to change if we have a vertical reflection. Um, if we have a horizontal reflection, nothing is changing. The range, the asymptote, and then the domain again is all real numbers. So um, if we have a horizontal reflection, nothing is changing. So my recommendation on all of these transformations would be to think about and actually sketch out what the graph is. Um, and that will help you visualize and determine what the domain, the range, and the horizontal asymptote looks like.